Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Shatkin and welcome to this Monday Morning Minute. Today I'm going to give you a few tips on how to do a roundhouse or a fix on six restoration properly so you don't have to have any remakes and limit the number of times that you have to send it back to the laboratory. Because of course chair time is valuable and patient time is valuable of course too. So the steps involved in proper planning and processing of a fixed roundhouse restoration, whether it's a detachable fix on six restoration or a cemented fixed on 10 or 12 restoration is this. Number one, proper planning of the placement of the implants is of utmost importance, which means send in either your good quality impressions and a CT scan or a good quality panoramic x-ray along with good quality impressions or if you have digital impressions that's great too. Upload all of those to the uh, Shatkin First portal. Uh, if it's an STL file or the DICOM files, whatever you might have, upload all that or just send in your manual impressions to us and we will pour those impressions, scan them into our system and we will help you plan the case properly. And when we talk about planning the case properly, we're going to take our time. Either myself, Dr. Powers, or Dr. Lucchese will spend ample time planning out your case to make sure we plan the position of those implants in the available bone that you have so that we put as many implants as we possibly can in the available bone, angle them properly, to avoid the sinus cavity, avoid the nerve canals, avoid the adjacent teeth so that we can place the implants in the placement positions that we want to use ideally to finish the case properly. That's number one. Number two, we're going to make you a surgical guide stent so that when you place the implants you can be comfortable placing them where you want to place them. Once you've got the implants in place and you know they're in good bone and they're solid, you're going to take a very good quality impression. Now what kind of impression material you use is up to you. I truly enjoy using the Kettenbach impression material. I started using that about six months ago and I love the product. It's very, very uh, hydrophilic. It's very good quality impression material and I have almost a perfect impression every time. If you're using a digital impression, that's perfectly fine as well. Take a good quality impression. Do not use alginate or alginate substitute. Use a, a permanent polyvinyl or polyether impression. Take the best impressions you can of the opposing arch as well. And take a good bite registration. If you're not sure of your bite, have a wax bite rim made. Let, take that extra step to have a good quality bite rim made and get that patient back to get a good bite. When you do that bite, make sure you mark that midline. Midline is very important. The midline of the frenum is not always the midline of the face. As you know, you need to mark the midline. Look at the midline of the nose. Midline of the nose may not be the midline of the face. The midline of the lower teeth may not be the midline of the face. You need to pick that midline where you want the midline of the teeth. Okay, Usually it's the midline of the frenum and the incisive papilla, but it may not be, right? So make sure you mark the midline and mark the smile line. If you want to use some toothpicks to mark the, the horizontal and the vertical, that's great too. You can put those in the wax. Once you've got that all marked, send it back to us and we will mount the case and we will do a try-in. The try-in is very important. We will send you back a nice acrylic milled try-in. You'll try that milled framework in the patient's mouth. It's going to be a milled plastic try-in that you're going to try in. And this is your chance to look at it in the patient's mouth. Let the patient take a look at it. See if they're happy with the way it looks. This is not something for them to take home with them. It's just for them to try in the mouth and make sure that the midline is good, the occlusion is good, and the general smile line is good. At that point, if you need to make some adjustments, go right ahead. 
grind on them, adjust them, add composite to them, subtract from them, adjust the bite. If you need to mark, move the midline, go ahead and grind on it, mark a new midline, write any notes you need to our lab technicians so that they can make the corrections you want. When doing your try-in, make sure you refer to this slip and fill it out properly. If you want a second try-in, we'll do a second try-in for you. Once you're comfortable with the final try-in, then we'll go to finish restoration. And hopefully you've communicated all the changes you might need to our lab techs. A picture is worth a thousand words. Take photos of the try-in, take a shade guide, put it next to the patient's face, make sure that you select the proper shade for the patient's result. And I'm talking about not just the porcelain color of the teeth, but also the gingival color too. So have a gingival porcelain shade guide as well. Get all of those records and send it back to the lab and they will make a beautiful zirconia restoration with pink porcelain if you desire it. In some cases you may, some cases you may not. For example, in this case, We've got the porcelain teeth butting right against the gum line. You may not need pink porcelain. In other cases, you may need pink porcelain if you have to build a porcelain flange, for example, in a case like this, where you need to add extra pink gingiva. So it all depends on the specific situation. If the patient needs more lip fullness, you may need a much larger pink porcelain flange. So those are the things you need to communicate with our laboratory. I hope this information was helpful to you. As always, you can reach out to myself, Dr. Powers, or Dr. Lucchese if you have any questions at all about uh, the process of doing your fixed roundhouse cases. We are doing more and more fixed roundhouse restorations on mini implants. Generally, I cement them, but I do a lot of fixed detachable restorations that we call our fix on six. We say six, but we usually use eight to 10 implants. Just uh, the name fix on six uh, kind of is our comparison to the all on four, which in oftentimes they use six conventional implants. We use eight to 10 minis, but whatever you choose to do, just communicate properly with the lab and take the necessary steps to get the job done correctly. And keep in mind that those fix on six restorations work very well with our beautiful new OCAP housings. You don't have to use the O-ring housings anymore. You can use the O-caps, which are smaller in diameter, fit very nicely in those fix on six restorations and snap on more snugly. So check those out as well. And we'll be back next week on the Monday Morning Minute. Thanks for joining me. Again, I'm Dr. Todd Shatkin. and see you next week. Good morning, everyone. I'm Fitz and I just want to tell everyone we're so excited to have you with us for the Monday Morning Minute. Please, do not miss out on the Advanced Mini Dental Implant course this upcoming Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st. On the 19th, Dr. Shacken, Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Smith, and Dr. LaSorsa are going to be lecturing on the benefits of mini dental implants. On Friday, Dr. Shacken will be doing live surgery from 8 a.m. till noon, and then Dr. David Powers is going to take over and do live advanced cases in the afternoon right up till 5 p.m. And on Saturday, November 21st, Dr. Matthew LaSorsa will be lecturing from 8 a.m. Eastern time till noon on the benefits of LPRF bone grafting with the osteogen plugs and strips. He will also be doing a live procedure with the LPRF. So be sure to attend. This is our last advanced webinar of 2020 and I'm sure that you'll pick up a lot of informational tips that'll help you in your day-to-day -day mini implant placement. We would also like to remind everyone to take advantage of the 179 tax deduction this year. We're offering the Generate Papaya 3D machine. It takes 3D x-rays, 2D x-rays, bite wings. It's a great, great machine. To be able to see that three-dimensional image is priceless. And you also get the PX4, which is the portable x-ray machine. It sells for 6,000 usually. You get it free of charge. Till the end of December. You will also get three months of CT guided stents at no charge. So it's a very, very good value. We're also offering our essentials kit, our aseptical surgical motor that's all pre-programmed with Dr. Shacken's settings in it. We have the piezotome cube, which is a phenomenal machine for extracting teeth. And we have the intraspin, the LPRF 
uh, machine from BioHorizons that is a phenomenal way to bone graft, which you'll see on Saturday the 21st. So take advantage of those 179 tax breaks, save yourself some money, and get the right equipment that aids in the placement of mini dental implants. And please check out our website, shackenfirst.com, for our upcoming courses. Dr. Shacken and our team will be out in Honolulu, Hawaii, um, giving a hands-on mini dental implant presentation on the 4th and 5th of December. So if you want to get out of the bad weather, come out to Hawaii with us. We look forward to seeing you on the next Monday Morning Minute. Have a great week.